If you take any walk, whether it's around your neighborhood or around your school or around the block, you're taking a snapshot in time and space. Mine just happens to be really big. I'm a reporter. I'm just kind of an ordinary reporter. I've worked for American newspapers for years. I would fly into stories. I would spend days, weeks, sometimes months. I would write the story. I would go home on to story B, do the same. Story C, do the same. I decided to get off that merry-go-round and just say, stop. As I flew home, as I drove to the airport, I began to wonder about the stories that lay in between. I just want to show you this map. The red line is me. The route starts in Ethiopia, into the Middle East, through China, down the western flank of the New World, all the way to the very tippity tip of Latin America. It's a journey of about 30 million footsteps and a journey of at least seven years of my life. Why am I doing this? Why am I taking this path? It's basically an effort to try to slow myself down as a storyteller, enough to immerse myself into the stories of everyday people, but we rarely get to hear their voices. Friend said this year, maybe four million people. Come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all, world. all over the world. Oh. It's really amazing. Where I can go to truly understand the stories. Where I can go to get not just information, but meaning. And that's what slow journalism is about. And so the way to do that is to just walk through these stories. The distance that I walk each day varies. It depends on whether there are enough stories, and if there are, then I stop. And so stories slow me down, because it takes time to talk to people. I record videos, I take sound, I shoot still photographs, pass the camera and microphone to the people, and to stop talking for them and let them speak for themselves. How long have they been traveling? Where are they going? My process is I write down basically in real time. It all starts with the foundation of a pen and a notepad and taking down notes the old fashioned way. Like I'm taking interviews, I write that down. If I'm walking, I've learned to walk and take notes at the same time and not fall on my face. How many notebooks have you gone through in the past six years? Uh, it's somewhere around 100. Yeah, so yeah, it's a lot of notes. When I talk about writing, we're not taking a notebook and shaking out every single last word that's in it. It's the opposite. Rivers in the glacial valleys of the Karakoram, the towering mountains of northern Pakistan, swirl ice cold in the color of slate. Along the banks of some of these remote waterways, Patchwork tents huddle like flotsam. Inside the tents live nomad families who wander from current to current, panning the dark sands for glints of gold. These are the Sonewal. We're good at pulling gold from the pockets of the river, boasted Isaac Khan. Children and women also toiled at the river diggings north of the town of Gilgit. Later at their camp, Khan would use highly toxic mercury to purify their day's take, a tiny bead of raw gold worth about $40. A good day, Khan beamed. In a nutshell, the most important skills as a journalist are human skills. Anyone can do slow journalism. You don't need to walk around the world like me. You need to get off of this machine. You need to get off what's up, off the phone, and you need to go actually have a conversation face to face with a real human being who breathes. You can take a slow walk around your neighborhood. You can pause as you're walking and close your eyes and 
try to think about what you're hearing and what you're smelling along your walkway, along your path. Keep a journal. Jot down these impressions. Stop and talk to people. Talk to somebody your age. Talk to somebody older from another generation. Ask them what was the neighborhood like when they were young. This is all slow journalism. This is all being more awake, listening more, watching more, being patient with the world.